Masking. Masking is by far one of the most important things you got to learn in ZBrush. So it might take a couple videos, but let's call this one Masking 1. Let's go to Lightbox, um, go to Project, go to Default Cube, take off Perspective, and then we're going to just kind of mask this cube. And my preferred method of masking stems from the marquee selection. If you hold control, click and drag from the outside out in, you get this. Okay? And if you look at this, you'll see that there's a slight blur. So the mask is only as good as the level of polygons that you have. If you go in here to clear this mask and then geometry divide to like let's say 8 then do it again you'll see that you get a crisper line. Now the only other way to get a really really crisp line like that is use the topology of the mesh. So here's what I'm talking about. If you go to masking and take that and clear it and then let's lower this down show polyframe. Let's say for instance I wanted to mask off this top section. Holding control and shift I can make a poly group and then control W will set that poly group. Control and shift anywhere else will reveal the mesh. So if I wanted to make a super strict line going across with a the mask, I could do this. Go back, hold control and shift, hold control, click anywhere, this will mask that part, then control and shift. And you can see that's a very strict line. And having a strict line like that means that when you do do things like deformation, and let's say I do uh, inflate negative. I get a nice clean edge. All right. So the name of the game is really crisp. Not always, but when it comes down to inorganic modeling, I would say it is. Now, if you're just dealing with organic modeling, uh, you could rely on just the pen tool. Okay, so here, if you hold control, you can make a mask. Again, based upon the level of polygons that you have is the amount of detail that you get with the mask, but it has a blur on the outside edge. So if you wanted to sharpen that, you could, within the masking menu, you could say sharpen mask. Okay, then I can, if I want to clear that out, I could, just like that. Also, we have a great deal of ways to mask. We have the mask circle. Now, anytime I use the control, I get, oops, sort of this. Notice how crisp that one is. So any of the marquee based ones get this really crisp edge. Now again, if I went to, let's say, to the deformation menu and inflate by three, or five, you can see that that is a really crisp edge there. So crisp that you could barely tell. So I'll take this, go to masking, and clear it. And you'll see that I have a really nice deformation on the mesh. And you can almost see where areas that weren't so crisp, like in this area. All right, now let's look at the other ones. We have the mask curve. This was another personal favorite of mine. So in this 
and it takes a second to use it. Um, so there we go. Click and drag out, and I get this. See where it fades out? That's where it's going to mask from there on up. In this case, it'll mask from this point all the way up and leave a very crisp line down here. Now what's nice about this is, if I start dragging this out and use the Alt key, I could start setting a point where I want the curve to change. And I get this. So this is one of the second things I use all the time is the curve. Um, the mask curve pen is kind of weird, but it is sort of useful. So holding control, I start making this. This is great for making ornaments on armor. <laughs> then click and drag out and I get this. Now I can move this curve after the fact. I can also augment the curve after the fact just by keeping control held down. So you can make some really cool patterns with this, especially on armor. And if you use this in conjunction with the sharpen mask, you get some very interesting designs. I'm sure there's some other uses for it, but that's how it technically works. Uh, mask pen is what's on by default, and the mask rectangle is also by default. So here's the mask rectangle, just by holding control, clicking and dragging out, you get that. But now you can do it in the center of a mesh, where you couldn't before. Okay, and using the mask pen, that's what this is by holding control. Now if I try to use the marquee tool, look what happens. I have to start from the outside edge because if I don't, I get this. Alright, so those are the basics of masking via the pens and the tools over here. There's certainly other methods of masking, but we'll call this mask by tools. And then we'll call that a video. So I hope you enjoyed.